I've sunk an enemy destroyer. In the midst of the morning, USS Gearing sails the deep. Leader of the pack, secrets to keep. Guns loaded, torpedoes glide. Through the water, she rides with pride. UEL Gearing swift on the wave, braving the storm, bold and brave. With a heart of steel in oceans roll. Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a great video with the gearing back-to-back -back video. It's going to be totally awesome. And on this Labor Day weekend, can't, can't, can't wish you guys a, enough how grateful we are about everything you guys do. About supporting the community and building the channel. As always, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support on happy Labor Day weekend as well. Hope you guys enjoyed your time off if you are working. Uh, thanks for working out there and supporting the, the community and building it. So as always, uh, let's get right to it. Talking about the USS Gearing. Actually, one of the first Tier 10 Destroyers released in the game. I believe reading history, this thing was released as a Tier 9, subsequent, maybe subsequent ship after the Fletcher uh, class. And now it is moved up to Tier 10 at that time. So this is probably one of the oldest ships in the game. And part of this video is just discussing, actually, about how powerful the ship still is in today's meta of 2024. And I still believe that the, the Destroyer class is still the most powerful class in the game, allowing you to do so many things. And that might be controversial since a lot of people say that carriers are the most broken class. But overall, carriers don't really cap much, and they don't. all they do is just go around and blow stuff up. But... We do actually a better job as a destroyer player. We're a destroyer main channel, and we focus on the gameplay you're seeing right off the bat right here, and we're destroying a Venom, which is the machine gun of torpedoes, but guess what? We also have torpedoes, and boom, he goes down. First kill of our game, Splash 1, he goes down, and initially, that is exactly what you want to do as a destroyer player. You want to eliminate the enemy destroyer threat right off the bat you could see the power of the torpedoes right there unsuspecting very decent very uh not as fast but that you can build them for speed the uh, maximum i think i've seen these things get up to is about 72 knots so pretty darn quick for what you need to do and then you got the guns the guns are actually uh for what i build right here a little bit faster reloading guns i didn't really care about the torpedo reload because they're eventually going to come back anyways and i'd rather focus on guns they're a lot more consistent as as you can see the American smokescreen inside holding out as much as you want. You can really just sit here and farm cruisers, cruisers and battleships. And Boom Splash 2 right off the bat securing the second area or second ship in the central area right there. And now we're going to start working going to town on turpets. And as you can see right here, look how much time we've got on that smoke. It is ridiculous. And again, always keep that throttle. I, as a good destroyer player, keep that throttle at least ready to go either if you're in reverse or continue in quarter speed because that way you're in motion and you can steer as i'm just uh dodging these torpedoes coming up from the rear right here you're not just sitting still or in a uh, very weak position as to get the engine started up um, i'm a you know i'm a pilot so i've flown four engine multi-engine rating aircraft and i remember that when i was landing i always had to keep in a little bit of slop into the throttle because you know it takes time for engines to spool up same kind of mentality with the you know the destroyer battleship class you want to keep at least some kind of speed and uh, throttle into the direction you want to go because it does take time to reverse that uh the action that you're doing so for example right now i'm in uh reverse uh that's really deadly if you have to get start moving forward because now as you can see it takes time to get going and, and, and accelerate if I don't have engine boost to get that acceleration going faster, it may put you in a compromising situation where you have torpedoes being launched to you. I've always said uh, smoke and torpedo magnets. So you don't want to linger too much in the, um, the, um, the smoke. However, I've noticed I got four ships or three ships around me, so I think I'm a little safe from torpedoes right now. There's no threat in the area that I see. We've eliminated the majority of their destroyer threat in the central area, central area. And now we're going to town on the turpets, and look at that power, and boom, there it is. Three kills right off the bat in the first section of the game in the center of the map, and we have established dominance as the gearing class inside the uh, central area right there. 57,000 damage, three kills in the first five minutes of the game. And that's exactly how powerful you can employ this ship. And like I said, this thing is so, so, so darn powerful. And uh, man, I, I still think 
and you can even see it in competitive people are still using the gearing for a majority of roles and i think it it, it, it complements those roles very very well our friendly um atago kills the johnson right there eliminating their short threat what did i say if you start eliminating their destroyers one by one it literally increases your probability of winning ohio taking a shot at a gearing which is really hilarious no noting that there's other ships in the area maybe we're the only one spotted but why not check out the power of these guns these guns are they're nothing to laugh at i mean they although they, they may look like little pea shooters but these are secondary you know the ohio that we're shooting right now uses the same guns 127 millimeter guns uh and they're shooting uh the, the basic shells yet they start fires that's what the ohio is good for oh gearing's got the same guns why not use them to start fires with this kind of same mentality uh and i i argue uh, why don't battleships have all these kind of secondary guns if i can reach out to 12 kilometers make the ohio's guns reach out to 12 makes no sense right look at that started another fire on the ohio right there he is running away from us that's the power of a destroyer if he is so scared to the point where he's reversing that tells you that hey man this thing packs a powerful powerful punch and impact we've got torpedoes out we got the gun so let's talk about what makes this ship so great uh well the first thing we already talked about is these 127 millimeter guns and right there you can see 127 millimeter velocity is slow but they're good for lobbing over um the islands five percent chance and it basically the basic guns you see everywhere ap and i don't really use ap much here are the torpedoes 99 second reload guys again we haven't built for them We're, we just uh sacrifice gun reload for uh i'm sorry torpedo reload for gun reload because as you can see the guns are very consistent on this thing and i do like them a lot and someone takes out the the ohio forest right there but you can see the range is 16 and a half what other destroyer class allows you to shoot 16.5 kilometers and the detection seven and a half seconds not many you got the shimakaze but their torpedoes are like you know spotted from the moon so 16 and a half kilometers very very generous for what it does packing 21,000 points on damage right there and then of course this is arms race so you get a little bit of buff right there but you get the drift Depth charges are great, uh, 14, so a lot of depth charges. The smoke is with the bread and butter. This thing literally disperses 130 seconds. So you got about two minutes of smoke screen time, and people in competitive, what they get is the gearing with this engine boost going on, 40 knots, uh, top speed. You literally are racing across the map, putting down a wall of smoke, and it's so, so darn powerful. People, you can hide battleships and cruisers all over the place in the smoke screen, and that's what makes the gearing so, so darn powerful. And even very, very uh, attractive for competitive. So it is a very, very versatile and powerful ship. Now, I would say this is not one of those hunter killer destroyers where you want to go out and take on uh, a lot of these other gunboat main DDs because, man, as you can see, the firepower just isn't there. And of course, you don't have what I've always said is the mo uh, definite must if you want to go up and take other uh, destroyers head on is a heal. You notice I don't have any heals in the gearing, and that's the one downside I think about it because. If you're going to go out and like duke it out with other um, you know ships you need to have heels to you know not only absorb the damage or make and, and correct for those mistakes because you are risking a lot of your ship for that reason and again you only started with 22,900 hp which was the average uh, for tier 10 and nowadays with like you talking about elbing up to 30,000 you got ragnar up to 30,000 i mean you're playing with the big boys right now we get another torpedo hit right there these torpedoes are very unsuspecting they come out of nowhere and they're very very quick and they pack a wallop so um like i said going back to this it's not a gunboat main but when it does need to farm it has that long smoke screen that literally you can just pop in and out and just farm to your heart's desire so it does the role it's the most versatile destroyer that i've seen since the release of the game and again it has been it came out at the beginning of when world of warships came out what is it world of warships been out now about eight nine years now tell me what the date is in the chat guys but it's been that long and it survived the test of time because i still see people picking gearings a lot and randoms a lot especially in competitive so it is a very very versatile very very deadly very uh prominent ship that is a why it, it, it solves and, and it fulfills a wide variety of roles and i really really do enjoy it i think it's still accomplishes and sub, sur, i would say survives the meta of today very very effectively and well and look at this right here oh man isn't that just a wet dream for a get short player right there broadside battleship full torpedo salvo right into him and boom there it is devastating strike four kills right there unsuspecting right there and we cap the objective as well you're doing every single thing that a destroyer player should be doing in a gear and then that's exactly why i like it so much and i never thought i always thought that without heels or any kind of gimmick or anything that you know the gearing would not survive the test of time as you can see in my other counterpart player the vampire right there i actually enjoy the vampire a lot more but man the power of the guns i've noticed and even 
the survivability of the gearing, it just sometimes seems like the Yu-Yang, it's difficult to hit sometimes when it's shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake, and going left and right, juking the throttle. And it even has a 21 millimeter armor plate in the center of the hull, which, you know, I didn't realize that would make a difference. But actually, when you're going up against smaller caliber guns, for example, the Vampire and the, and the Daring, their guns, HE guns, are on, they only pin 19 millimeters. So I was wondering, why am I shooting at a gearing with these small caliber guns and they're not penetrating? I actually noticed that one time in a recording and I'm like, wait a second. I didn't know that he has a little armor plating that's slightly higher that can shatter a lot of those small caliber shells. So, man, when you see, again, I always say you need a PhD to play this damn game because you got to know all these little uh, aspects and armor and, and numbers that no, not many people can remember. And it requires sometimes people like us and YouTube and everything to talk about it so that you're aware. So it's really, really interesting. You got to know all these things. But man, gearing survives a lot of uh, very good survivability, if I had to say that myself. But like us just talking those basic aspects right there. Uh, meanwhile, while we talk about the stats here, look at that. 157,000 damage, seven torpedo. That's four uh, kills, four flat. I mean, my gosh, this thing is still powerful. Number one in the team in a destroyer. My gosh. And uh, as you can see, a lot, a lot of damage. Torpedo, 84,000 just in torpedo damage alone right there in the guns, 58,000 with fires and flooding. So pretty darn great and in the potential damage look at 610,000 not necessarily a million but man still people a lot of people shooting at you as well okay so let's take a look at another video and uh, just just displaying the power of the gearing all right so here's another game everybody's favorite map domination uh hot spot man i hate this map by the way on hot spot because at charlie point as a destroyer player you're your first job is to get that cap and it sucks because you're the one that has to literally go in there and cap it first so you hold off the other team from capping it. And literally, you're pointless because you just sit there behind an island and just kind of stalemate it out. I mean, it's just two destroyers sitting in the cap of Charlie. This map right here, as you can see right here, it's just a bunch of islands in the middle, right? So he's capping Charlie, right? This other destroyer. And literally, we are just going to have to sit in this map right here and uh, just hold. I mean, it, but the reason behind, I understand it in competitive, the reason behind this is you just want to stop the other team from ticking points up. And of course, points is the objective of capping points and really just getting more and more points. And whoever establishes it first gets the uh, lead or the, I guess you could head start on the point capping. And I'll go ahead and speed this up since it's a little boring me. I'm literally just sitting here back and forth, back and forth. And th the reason why I chose this game is because it demonstrates a lot of what the gearing is so strong and capable at because it gives you such a wide variety of ways to win. And the, the gearing does a very, 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 very good job of supporting the role of doing everything, uh, especially as a story. Look where all my players are at. They're all on the sides of the flanks or in the back. So you really have no support here. You got the carrier, of course, always spotting. And, and really, I'm just sitting here back and forward, back and forward. Kind of boring, right? But it really, if you don't, re if you don't see it, it really is just holding the team off from capping points. Notice that they are not capping points as well just because we're holding charlie so right now we've made the decision to this is why rpf is so powerful i have rpf locating that that other shore is literally right in front of me right here in front of this island i'm not sure why the island is blocking my view i guess that's part of the mechanics now but anyways we're gonna rush them and uh now we're spotted this is very very bad because now we have a carrier spotting us and free spotting for this enemy destroyer player he's somewhere right here and I'm getting red. And there he is. See? So he was literally right up to the edge. And this is where the power of being a good gunboat destroyer is. The gearing can do it. I mean, we're going to go up against an Asashi, which is a poor, you know, gunboat for a Japanese destroyer. And uh, I don't recommend it anymore. But look at the power of what we can do with the guns. It literally is just going to melt this guy. And he's probably going to go down right there. Come on, one more shot. Oh, man. We almost got it. And, uh, oh, thank goodness, somebody helped us out. So we pop smoke right away. We go undetected. He's got deep water torpedoes, so I'm not really worried. Again, having a PhD, like I said, in this World of Warships game is so crucial. It's, it's, it's literally, that's what's required to play the damn game. Um, but knowing that the Dishashio doesn't have any torpedoes that can kill me means that all he has is guns, and I definitely know I can spot him because we we're that close in range. You can build a gearing with a legendary upgrade that gets the concealment down to about 5.6-ish, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe lower, but I think 5.6 is that sweet spot. Do I recommend it? I don't know yet. I don't have it, so I don't know how to use it yet. But honestly, I think 5.9 is decent for what I need to do because I don't want to sacrifice uh, either gun reload for because the guns do increase the reload on it. And I, I'd rather keep the guns because I may need them, just like in that situation right there. So right now, we're going to go ahead and cap uh, Charlie. And again, you're going to see the versatile role of what a gearing does. And it literally is the all-around. Uh, it holds 
my personal opinion, still holds the king of the candle right there for uh, being that uh, multi-role fighter. Uh, similar along the lines of Daring, and I think the Daring and the Gearing can kind of hold both that crown together because I still like the Daring, the British Destroyer Tier 10. But again, the Gearing, man, it is powerful with the 16.5 kilometer torpedoes. Daring's torpedoes only go out to 10. So you got to get, you know, like I said, it depends on your play style. I still think the gearing is pretty awesome. The guns are powerful. It's got the nice little, like I talked about, armor plating in the center there. That's why I think maybe some of the guns were shattering shells. I don't know. I don't know what the Asashio's guns are. I think there's still the Shimakaze big guns that can still pin 21 millimeter. But any gun that's like the Daring or Vampire below, HE shells are 19 millimeter pins, so it will not work as well on the center uh, section of my hull. So that's what I like about it. The AA on this thing, like I said, AA is always trashing anything. You can replace the engine boost, uh, as you can see down there, with defensive fire AA. But again, how many times do you get a carrier match or they hunt you down? I think I like engine boost a lot better. And of course, yeah, like I said, they, going back to AA, AA is trash in the game anyways. Although I think the gearing, yeah, it does a decent amount. I mean, we'll, you'll watch this game and kind of see how much AA, how, much, how many planes actually shoot down. So pretty darn powerful there. And, of course, we also have the uh, the smoke we talked about lasting a very long time. And, of course, we're always, you know, capping. We're, we're out there. We're spotting. We're capping. We're doing a lot, a lot of um, that scout forward recon roll, which, I mean, I do enjoy. It's very, very powerful. Aiming these torpedoes has been tricky lately. I mean, I have to literally gauge. See, I'm kind of looking. Okay, where is he at? All right, let me cut, put one in front of the, the uh, targeting uh, predictive cursor. Let me put one behind it. Kind of just anticipating what the Iowa is going to do right there. Is he going to accelerate? Is he going to turn? It's just an art. I don't know. I mean, human beings act different ways. Everybody responds differently. Uh, it's very difficult to predict uh, players nowadays. So launching torpedoes, very, very difficult. Man, that chat is really, really um, toxic these days. Anyways, uh, we're focusing on the Iowa here. And Iowa is really trying to rush a destroyer. Nah, I don't know. It's really t difficult to do that. Now, you're going to see the power of what the guns can do right here again. That's why I like the gun reload being down to two and a half seconds. It's a, that's a decent amount of uh, reload speed that I like. My my smoke is about ready off cooldown, so I'm going to take this opportunity to shoot him. Notice that the uh, Iowa would rather shoot at us than the Venezia. That tells you right there the power of what a destroyer can do. And he's firing AP. Incredible. So we're going to pop smoke right here, be at quarter speed. Now, you can be at quarter speed, and this smoke screen lasts dispersing 30 seconds to disperse this damn thing. So literally, I can do almost like a crawling smoke at quarter speeds for 30 seconds. So it's, that's another trick right there, kind of like vampire style, where you're just kind of crawling along with, you know, this smoke, and it lasts literally up to two minutes. So I'm just sitting here pretty much moving, not sitting still, dispersing the smoke screen as best I can. And of course, ooh, look at that. Nice superstructure hit. Look at that, 1,500 damage just on the guns alone. And let's see if we can nail this guy. Come on, one more hit. Oh, man, one hit. He had the heal going on. And boom, there it is, splash one. 26,000 damage in the first 10 minutes of the game. And right there. Now, let's take a look at the AA on this Essex. I hate Essex. Essex is a powerful destroyer or uh, carrier. Look at that. We get that nice little shell hit right there, taking 1,000 damage. And let's see how much damage we can do on this uh, Essex uh, bomber planes here. And we always turn parallel to the bombers because the, bomb, the bombs come out in a long straight line. So we come out perpendicular 90 degrees. And it normally does miss. That's the most you can do to mitigate. Rather than going up and down the line of the bombs, you don't want to line your ship up with the bombs, right? So you got to go 90 degrees perpendicular, making sure those bombs uh, have minimized the damage, and he's coming back for us again. Let's see. Look at the AA. Yeah, not bad. AA. Now, here's his invincibility period. Uh, right there. Invin let's see. Where does he get? Right there. See the perpendicular uh, uh, tactic right there, avoiding uh, carrier planes? Yeah, that's the best we could do. We did 17, we're up to 17, 18,000 damage on airplanes. He's got a spotter plane up right there. So again, you can see how trash the AA is in this game. Uh, the gearing doesn't have much as well, even though it has great guns for AA. I think it has, you know, in reality, good, decent bow for guns up there. I don't understand why I don't shoot down more planes, but whatever, I digress. We've, we've captured Charlie and Bravo now. Now look at our team. Now, it looks like we are winning, right? But actually we're losing because remember up, up at the top there, the, the points are backwards. So we're actually losing more. So we're uh, starting to lose a little bit of ships here. and We're still down on points. So let's take a look at how we're going to win this. So RPF is very, very good for, like you notice, I always run RPF on the destroyer roll. I need to know where everybody's at because it makes helps me avoid players as well. I don't want to run into people unsuspectingly especially with a long cooldown time for the smoke. So I have no other defensive measures other than running away and staying in stealth. Okay, we launched uh, our, our uh, torpedoes into smoke. Here comes another example of this uh, AA damage. Let's see here. We're still killing them. We're still killing them. When does he get this invulnerability period? Right there. Right? No. No. Oh, we're still ticking up. Maybe he doesn't have an invulnerability period for the Essex because he's constantly vulnerable. 
yeah, maybe they solved that. I don't know. I mean, we're still shooting down airplanes. Thank goodness, finally. Uh, let's see here. We are shooting on there. Okay, oh, wait. we have five against six, and we have both carriers still in the game. We're going to see if we can loiter around Bravo. Now, the reason why I like this roll so much is because it allows me to just literally sit in the middle with the concealment and just be this sentry, and I'm preventing so many people from entering the area that it literally we're just ticking up free points, and there's nothing that the other enemy team can do about it. Montana, way out in the distance there. You notice how far away he is, but our torpedoes reach out and touch people. And I believe we're going to get this hit. Look on the, the left here. Look at that. Look at this right here. Ooh, come on, baby. Come on. Right there. Give me a hit. Give me a hit. Boom. There it is. 12,900 damage. Like I said, just those random little torpedoes alone are just so annoying that they are there and they pose a threat. And it, it literally causes a lot of battleship and cruiser players to dodge the area. Because they know there's this destroyer, the gearing, that's literally just dropping torps like crazy and spotting, perma spotting them the whole time. And it's it's a very, very powerful, deadly combination. Hope you guys, again, Dead and I say, hope you guys are doing, uh, having a great Labor Day uh, weekend. Hope you guys are enjoying your time off. If you are working, uh, yeah, good on you. Thanks for uh, hacking the mission, supporting everything. Uh, I do have to work on Labor Day tonight. So anyways, uh, you know, supporting the mission. And uh, look at that. We are taking and holding off the center right there. Again, yeah, if you guys are enjoying your Labor Day, let me know what you did. Did you have a barbecue, play games, whatever you want to do, play World of Warships? And, oh, here we go, Montana. Boom. Another torpedo hit, splash two. He goes down. Anyways, like I said, Labor Day, celebrating the uh, time with your family or wherever you may be, uh, having time off from the labor day of labor. And uh, what way to celebrate it than, uh, you know, having that day off, man, having a barbecue, eating some food, whatever it may be in America or wherever you may be. I don't know if you guys celebrate that out there in the other world, those that are watching from overseas. I believe you guys don't celebrate Labor Day. So anyways, you might have another Labor Day wherever you are in your country. Let me know as well. It's always good to share uh, stories because I used to fly around the world and I always loved hearing about people's different um, cultures, different traditions and things of that nature. It was really enjoyable flying around the world uh, and uh, seeing those kind of things and, you know, meeting a lot of good people, too. That's why I believe, you know, being in the Air Force, it uh, does serve a good purpose of doing that as well, traveling around the world all the time and uh, meeting great people and doing great things. All right. All we got left is the cruiser, battleship and carrier. And we've got Yamato again. Very, very sweet uh, target right here for the gearing, almost like a wet dream where it is a slow, big and hunky target that you literally are just it's just free. You know, punching bag right here, just practicing your torpedo shots. And you can see I always lead it because I notice that most players are at full throttle. They'll eventually naturally speed up and walk their ship right into that predictive reticle. That's why I never really aim directly on the reticle. I'm always anticipating, does this person slow down or does this person speed up? Therefore, the reticle will shift either in front of the predictive uh, original or predictive uh, reticle or behind it. So I kind of like shoot one uh, rack before it and shoot one rack behind it. So if he turns or turns away, uh, or turns in or turns away, either way, he's going to eat something. So let's take a look at it right here. Kair is doing his best to uh, help the Yamato with uh, planes or uh, maybe any aircraft, whatever, but little to avail. Little does he know that he has a gearing constantly hunting him. And uh, that's the power, man. One little destroyer can hold down the whole area right here. It's pretty, pretty darn awesome. That's why I like the gearing so much. It's it's still powerful in today's meta, even like, again, with the guns right here. And do we get this hit? Kablawi. He goes down. Splash three. And we pop smoke right away to go and detect if there was anybody spotting us. Their Des Moines uh, was sitting back there. Uh, that's the only threat that we had. There's a radar cruiser. And he was sitting back here behind an island. So we know, again, our RPF is showing that he's probably traveling along this way up to the north. We're going to stay away from him. We don't know where he's exactly at. And I have the new modification that shows me their rectangle of their radar. But until he's spotted, I won't know. Like right there, he is there. Definitely outside of 10 kilometers of his radar, so I definitely know I'm out of it. And I like that new this new mod that tells me, like, where uh, am I at in relation to their radar. It's really awesome if you guys haven't seen it. It's a pretty darn... If you haven't seen a couple of the, um, the past few minutes of these games, if I'm within a radar uh, circle of a particular cruiser, the mod actually shows me that radar on the mini-map. Like, right now, see? You can see it. You can see it right there. There's that circle. So I just know I have to avoid that circle as long as he's spotted or last known position, and it actually alerts me. So that's a great modification. So let me know your thoughts on that. I use it all the time as a short player. And here we go. Let's take a look at the AA again. Wait until he arrives over right over ahead of us. And there it is. I pop the AA. And hopefully, oh, my gosh, you can still make this drop. Look at that. He still made a drop, even though he was literally on top of us. That's the power of the Essex right there. You can just drop bombs on a dime. 
and he goes away. So that's pretty much the game. Anyways, hope you guys are doing well. I hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. Uh, let me know what you uh, uh, think of the gearing. Is it still powerful in today's meta? And leave a comment below of your thoughts. As always, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support of the channel. Growing the community as well at 4,000 subs. We're going to do another premium giveaway. Look at that. Not much damage right there, but three kills. And let's see how we do it in the team. And number top three right there. We did a lot. And uh, very, very strong, very powerful destroyer still in today's meta. And uh, yeah, we did a buck of the damage, a lot of spotting, and a lot of the capping of the points as well. But as always, if you guys see me out there, say hello. You stay safe. And until next time, we'll see you guys soon. Cheers.